Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're, we are all reeling from this disaster, this murder, uh, the series of murders in South Carolina. We're asking who's to blame, and we're looking for leadership. We have no leadership. We have nowhere to turn. Not one Republican has stepped up. And I suggested just now on this show that the first thing that needs to be done is that the president, instead of blaming guns, should have said anyone who crosses state lines will be arrested under the Anti-Riot Act. You're not going into South Carolina to stir up a riot. That's what should have been done, but I haven't heard it. Well, we have a leader on the line right now, someone that I would vote for in a heartbeat, someone I would support right from the get-go, and that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. On this sad day, I'm glad you're with us. Hello, Michael. It is a sad day, is it not? Nine beautiful people executed in a church? Terrible. By a maniac. By a, a young man that is just an absolute sick, demented person. It's, it's a very sad thing, Michael. It's a very sad thing. Donald, look, let's talk about the election. That's what this is all about. Let's move on to that. And, and you know me. I'm straightforward, and I'm not trying to set you up, but people have called the show since you announced, and I, I support you from the get-go. But many people are saying, well, look, how do you know he's real? How do you know he's not going to split the Republican vote by running as a third-party candidate, pulling a Ross Perot? Would you answer that question? Do you think it's a, a, a fair fear? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm real. And, you know, you saw a poll that just recently came out in New Hampshire. This is from before I announced, before. So a lot of people didn't think I was running. And I was in third place, which is pretty good. And I think the reason I do well in that isn't because necessarily, I think I'm a nice person. I think you know I'm a nice person. I love giving to charities and helping people, the wounded warriors and everybody else that have been horribly treated. The vets have been horribly treated. But, but you know, the fact is, they, you know, a lot of people, they don't think I'm going to give up my life in order to do this. And we have to make America great again. And I came in third in a recent New Hampshire poll, and everyone's sort of like going, how is that possible? And again, considering they don't think I'm running, that's pretty amazing. Now, I'm very serious about it, Michael. I think our country is run by incompetent people. We have an incompetent president who truly doesn't have a clue. I don't think he has a clue. You know, a lot of people think he's a bad person. I don't know if he's good or bad. I can tell you what he is. He's incompetent. He doesn't, have, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, you look at Sergeant Bergdahl, where we get Bergdahl, the traitor. We get Bergdahl. They get five killers that are out there on the field now trying to kill everybody. And, you know, this is the way we would negotiate. This is the way he negotiates. We, you know, the Iran deal is a disaster. The trade deals are all a disaster. Every, every country is beating us in trade. And believe me, if I win, that won't happen. That will not be happening, that I can tell you. Well, well let me ask you this. Given the antipathy of the Republican establishment to your candidacy, because they're afraid by your, your simple, plain, honest truths and what needs to be done, would you consider running on a third-party ticket? And you know what that would do. That would elect Hillary, wouldn't it? Sure. I'm never writing anything off. I'm, gonna, I'm running as a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm a conservative. Okay. Well, you said it right now. You said I'm running as a Republican. That's, that's really what I said. I said he's not going to split the ticket. Yeah. I'm, I'm running as a Republican. I want to go all the way. I don't like a lot of these people. It's not even like. I don't respect some of these people, they, right. they shouldn't even be running for office. They have no right, right. to run for office. Yeah, most know, of them are, they're in, Donald, you know that the best and the brightest generally don't go into politics, you being the exception. And you said years ago, run the country like a business, uh, not like, uh, God knows what it is, a welfare state. Right. You and I both agree there should be tariffs on, on Chinese goods. Don't you agree? Killing us. They're, they're, they're tariffing our goods. They're putting tariffs and taxes on our goods. And we talk about free trade. You know, the problem with free trade is you need speech to smart people to negotiate for. I don't mind. I love free trade. I'm a free trader. But right. China's not a free trader. They're killing us. You know, when Boeing sells planes to China, they take all the secrets of Boeing. That's part of the deal. You're going to have to give us all your patents, all your <sighs> secrets. You're going to have to give us everything. I mean, it's brutal you do business with them. I have a friend that tries to get stuff into China. He can't get it in. Finally, he gets it in, and they charge him tax. And yet we think they're so wonderful. And, you know, they put out a statement about me from the Chinese embassy. I was very mm. proud of that, of course. But they put out a statement that Mr. Trump is wrong, essentially. Mr. Trump is wrong. We have a wonderful partnership with the United States. Uh -huh. with the partnership. Well, of course they love it. I love it, too, when we have stupid partners that don't know what they're doing. You know, sure, like like the the battery maker A one two three systems, which was given one hundred and thirty three million in in federal taxes and whatnot, tax credits and and grants. They went bankrupt. The company was then bought by a Chinese company, and now they're making a profit and not going to pay back the federal government. What a deal they got! Hey, Donald, uh, we are we are 
incompetent. You know, the, the, the people that we have, neg- we have great people. We have Henry Kravis and Carl Icahn, and, you know, I could name a hundred guys. I could also name guys that have big names that aren't very good. You know, they're overrated. But I know the good ones, <laughs> I know the bad ones. I could put people in charge of China. China doesn't have a chance. I could be people in charge of Japan. You know, Japan sends in millions of cars over the years, millions. When was the last time you see a Chevrolet in Tokyo? Do you think there's any Chevrolet in Tokyo? Maybe the two. You know, how many Chevrolets do you think we have driving around in the no, Donald, I see the ships coming in San Francisco Bay every day. My heart breaks. I see these ships laden with foreign cars, and I don't understand why there's no tariffs on them. Well, how about this? Ford goes out and announces they're going to build a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico, right smack in the middle of Mexico. They're going to build, and you know what they're going to do with the plant? They're going to make cars and parts and trucks and stuff. They're going to send them to the United States, no tax. Now, explain to me, because I'm sort of a natural business. I built a great company. You see that because I released my financials, and everyone's sort of shocked. They had no idea. Right. They were, you know, they were hoping that... They wouldn't be so good, and they were, yeah, they were hoping they were hoping you were broke and that you you owed more money than you earned. I know that's what they were hoping. They were they were they were disappointed, weren't they? Right. Oh well, they were shocked because I'm a private company. They didn't know, so they were thinking it was two billion or one billion or nothing, or maybe I was worth nothing, and it turned out to be nine billion and. <laughs> Much higher than that, it will be. Much higher than that. But $9 billion, And by the way, very little debt. Unbelievable. So they were shocked. You know, they're going, wow, that we had no idea. Because, again, as a private company, these magazines and all, who treat me fine? But they don't know what. And, and I'm not doing that as a braggadocious thing. I'm just saying... I know what I'm doing. I would not let Mexico get away with it. I would tell Ford, you're going to pay a 35% tax every time you make a car and send it in. Because what are they doing? When they make cars in Mexico, that means we're not making that car in the United States. It's very simple. And that means we're not employing our people. Do you know how many companies have gone to Mexico to, to build? I mean, it's, you look at New England. The place was a ghost town. So, look, we need, and I love Mexico. I, th- I love the Mexican people. I have a lot of relationships with them. But they know they're getting away with murder. It's like China. China's the number one abuser, though. What they do with their currency manipulation is incredible. And our people are so stupid, they don't even cover it in trade packs. So, you look, know, when I, Donald, when you announced this week, I watched the little people, the, the Lilliputians, attack you. You know what I called them? I said they're toe dust compared to him. I saw these little men and little women trying to rip you apart, and I said they are toe dust. That's all they are. They're jealous of this man, and there's a lot of jealousy for successful people in this country, as you well know, Donald. Who would you pick as a VP candidate? Well, before I say that, you have like a guy like George Will. His hatred for me is unbelievable. What he doesn't tell you, you know, you take his glasses off, and he doesn't look like a smart guy anymore, right? But (laughs) he was... uh, Let's call him toe dust in a bad suit. Right. I have a place, Mar-a-Lago, and he was there about 12 years ago. He made a speech. I didn't go to it because I find him very boring. And he's actually wrong on many things. He was wrong on Iraq and wrong on plenty of things. But he, the hatred this guy has, I said, wow, I probably should have gone. But he was just, you know, I just didn't want to go. And it was years ago, but he never forgot. And that's the only reason. He hits me, and they do hit well, me. Well, why, why, he didn't like that you didn't go to his speech at Mar-a-Lago? Absolutely. He was very upset about it. He was very, very upset about it. But wow. you know, I have other things to do, and I couldn't go to his speech, and he never forgot it, and he hits me. And that's why. That's the way these guys... By the way, his speech was terrible. I had a friend that went there. They said it was terrible. So He's I didn't irre- anything. Donald, a guy like George Will, his time has gone a long time ago. He's irrelevant. No one reads him. But the issue is you. You're running. You're real. You don't really want to run as a third-party candidate. You say you're a Republican, even though they have a great fear of you. Would you be willing to consider a great man such as Ben Carson as a VP candidate, or is it too soon to ask that question? Michael, it's too soon to talk. I like Ben Carson. He's a nice guy. I know him. I've actually seen him at some of my places, and he's really a nice guy. He's got a very nice wife. I met him both. And, And, you know, they're nice people. But even Ben Carson, you know, it's like he doesn't have the experience to run something like that. He he's a surgeon, and it's different. It's not. Uh, so you say I we need someone. You need someone with a killer instinct like you. We need a killer who's smart, and not a killer. I know a lot of. Well, no, I say that in a, in a sports context. I grew up watching boxing matches, as I'm sure you do, because you have them in your hotels. And I was told since I'm a child by my father, the reason one man beats another, he said, Michael, watch that fight. The guy with the killer instinct usually wins. I never understood it till I got older and got punched a few times to understand what the killer instinct meant. 
You know the funny thing with me, it's really, I watch this stuff and I watch these guys and these pundits, and many of them are very good and many of them are just terrible, but the funny thing with me, so I go to the best school, the hard, just about the hardest school in the world to get into, the Wharton School of Finance. I did really good, I'm a good student, all that stuff, like a smart guy, you know, you can't be a dummy and get in. But you go into that school, I come out, I build a tremendous real estate empire. I started in Brooklyn, my father taught me a lot, but you know, it was a small company, and now it's a massive, I have some of the greatest assets in the world. I, I write a book called Trump, The Art of the Deal. It's the number one selling business book of all time, or very close. You know, somebody will say, oh, somebody else. I mean, so I always like to go, but just about. I think it's the number one, but it's like just about the number one selling book of all time. I do a television show. Everyone says, oh, the show will never make it. Fifteen copies of The Apprentice, they've all failed. Everybody copied it. They've all failed. It's still going. You know, they renewed. They're begging me. I mean, they would love me not to do this, they, but I, I'm doing it. I told them I'm doing it, but... It's now 14 seasons of The Apprentice, one of the most successful shows on television. I mean, a tremendous success. You remember the first season. It was like the, one of the biggest shows ever. That was a show that was supposed to never make it. All these copies, Martha Stewart copied, everybody copied it, and they didn't make it. Okay. And then I read, I shouldn't be on the same stage with some governor who is a nothing or a senator who's a nothing. I'm not right. saying that a senator is nothing or a governor is I'm just saying some of these people shouldn't be on the stage. But I, I sort of laugh. I build up this tremendous company, some of the great real estate assets of the world. The television show is a big hit. The book is a big hit. Other books are big hits, too, by the way. Uh, you know, you go to the best college and, and you do great, and then all of a sudden you're not supposed to be on a stage, and you have other people that frankly can't shine your shoes and it's okay for them to be on. <laughs> Donald, Donald, you and I see the world the same way. You know, when I supported you the other day on this show, I was shocked that that low-life writer at the National Review, whose name I don't remember, wrote such a horrible thing about you and said that your father gave you your empire, gave you your money, and you're a, he was a slumlord. That is such crap. I happen to know that your father built some of the finest middle-class apartment blocks in New York, both in Brooklyn and Queens. I know it for a fact because one of my relatives lived in them. They were beautiful buildings. Why do they do such things? Well, because, you know, the National Review is going out of business, in my opinion. I think it's doing very badly. William Buckley, William F. Buckley, I knew him. He was great. I was a young guy. He was a much older guy. But right. he was a great guy. And, right. Nash, and he must be spinning in his grave. They have a bunch of lowlifes over there. And you know the other thing they love? You know, like... When Carl Icahn or Kravis or Leon Black, any of the great business people, when they use the bankruptcy laws, you know, they throw something in a bankruptcy, they don't even write stories about it. If I use that, if I do that, oh, Trump went bankrupt. I never went bankrupt. But they always love to say that was the same low life. the guy that wrote for the net. No wonder the National Review has no power anymore. It's, it's disgusting. Well, they've what attacked me for years, and I understand that they're, they're run by these Lilliputians. But it's one thing to not like someone. It's another thing to outright lie and say your father was a slumlord. I took offense at that, and he wasn't my father. Well, you know what? My father was a terrific guy, and he built middle-income housing and low-income housing, and he did a right. great job for a lot of people, and he was a really good person, and he taught me a lot. And frankly, he did me a favor because he didn't want me to go to Manhattan, and I wanted, and he never went to Manhattan. And I right. said, Pop, I want to go to Manhattan. I want to build those big buildings. He said, Son, that's not our league. We don't want to do that. It's not our league. And I went. And, you know, that was mm. another thing. I guess I can add that to the book, and I can add that to, you know, all the other things. But, look... Our country is in serious, serious trouble. And, you know, my theme is very simple. Make America great again. We can make it great. We've got to take back our jobs from China. And I don't even mean all of them. We have to take back some of this stuff that's going on. You can't buy. If you want to buy a television, I just ordered 4,000 televisions for a big project I'm, I'm doing someplace. And, I, you know, I order televisions all the time. I have Doral in Miami. I, I've always, you know, they come from South Korea. Now, we protect South. They're making a fortune off us, by the way. If you want a television set that's made in America, try finding one, okay? I used to, I used to have an Emerson when I was a kid. Where'd it go? Different, right. But now South Korea bought that company, probably. They're all out in South Korea. So, although uh, Sony is still in Japan. So, we have a choice. South Korea is with Japan. So, I come, I, I get bids. And all the bids, I mean, I'm... I, Look, I've bought thousands and thousands of these things over the years, but so I understand where they come from. But you have LG, you have uh, Sanyo, you have this, that. They're all South Korea. And I'm saying to myself, wouldn't it be nice if we made televisions? I actually tell my people, 
is there a company that makes televisions in the United States? <laughs> Get the bids, and they're all from South Korea. Now, when South Korea has a problem, they're making a fortune off us, right? When South Korea has a problem with North Korea, where the guy starts rearing his head and he wants to, you know, start throwing around the nuke word and everything else, we immediately send our ships over. We send it. We get nothing. They don't get anything. Anything. We get you know, nothing. We don't get it. We don't get a jar of uh, kimchi from them in exchange. Hey, Michael, Saudi Arabia makes a billion dollars a day. A billion a day. Think of it. A billion dollars a day. When they have problems, and watch Saudi. You know, I was the one that predicted the the war in Iraq. I was the one that said it's going to be a disaster. I did that in '04. In fact, it was a big article. They just reprinted it from uh, Reuters in uh, Donald. 04. Can you stay to the? Can you stay with us to the top of the hour? Do you have to go? Um. Yeah, I can. I will for you. You know why, Donald? Because I have to make some money for my uh, the wonderful people who support this show, or else I'm out of business. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and come back with the greatest Donald Trump right here on the Savage Nation. I can talk with Donald Trump for the rest of the uh, weekend, right through Father's Day, but we have only a minute, and I want him to conclude with what he wants to say. Let's throw it right back to Donald Trump. Donald, what do you have to say to the millions of people who listen to the show and here you as a leader who does not blame the American people for what's going on, but blame an incompetent, divisive government for what's going on. Well, first of all, Mike, it's great to be with you, Michael, and, and really is. And I'm serious about this. I'm, I'm giving up a lot by doing it. These politicians give up nothing. They're all talk. They're no action. They're never going to bring us to the promised land. They don't know what they're doing. And we're in a bubble. We're going to have a problem like you've never seen before. We have to take our jobs back from China. We have to take our jobs back from Mexico and all the other places that are just ripping us. So... I'll do it, and they understand I'll do it. The other side knows. I deal with them all the time. I beat them all the time. So, you know, a lot of Donald, for the next Mexico is now deporting more illegal aliens than the, than the United States. I love your idea of the Great Wall. Donald Trump, thank you so much, and good luck. I hope you do run. This is the Savage Nation.